Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our Talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to a little poem called Tests, poem number 29 of the 38 of Autumn Rivulets. This is now uh, as we enter the last 10 poems of Autumn Rivulets. And this is another one of these little poems that often readers of Whitman don't really know much about and haven't spent much time with. But um, I'm going to challenge us to really take seriously this little poem. It's amazing to me what Whitman can do in a few brief lines. By the way, the word tests gets used one time only in all of Leaves of Grass, and it's, and it's uh, right here in this, in this moment. Um, now, we have said that autumn rivulets, autumn representing that which is old, rivulets that which is new. And for each one of these poems, a number of scholars have argued that this is kind of a hodgepodge of poems just kind of thrown together, and that you really can't tie it back to the title. But I think... I think Whitman's far more sophisticated than that. I think he has, he has every intent of talking about how autumn and rivulets will play into the game of learning. And, of course, we, uh, we just finished with Lesson Complete, so we know all about some of uh, what he has to say about learning in autumn rivulets. By the way, our assumptions are that you have been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, our playlist. And then you've been with us from the very beginning, winning inscriptions, beginning my studies, and all, of, all those other poems that he was already playing with ideas of learning. And, of course, the most precious passage for us in 303 is Song of Myself, 46, 47. He most honors my style, the lens under to destroy the teacher. We're actually going to begin here in a second with Song of the Open Road, 6, because I think that's such an important passage for us to come back to again and again to be reminded of Whitman's view of testing. Um, now, we did give a set of, of introductory comments to Autumn Rivulets uh, that I hope you're familiar with, and then, of course, we just finished with Lesson Complete. Now, as we often are wont to do, we go to our Nortons to hear that this poem tests was first printed with the present title in Leaves of Grass 1860 and in all succeeding editions without change. And then Norton's will point out the tests in this pronouncement seem to be the intuitive judgments of the soul. And I think that when one reads Leaves of Grass, that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, I just want to remind you of what Whitman says in Song of the Open, Open Road Passage 6. Obviously, we've We've uh, worked with this set of lines already in detail, but I just want to remind you, he says it this way, Now, if a thousand perfect men were to appear, it would not amaze me. Now, if a thousand beautiful forms of women appeared, it would not astonish me. Now I see the secret of the making of the best persons. It's to grow in the open air and to eat and sleep with the earth. Here, a great personal deed has room. Such a deed seizes upon the hearts of the whole race of men. It's a fusion of strength and will overwhelms law and mocks all authority and all argument against it. Here is the test of wisdom. Wisdom is not finally tested in schools. Wisdom cannot be passed from one having it to another not having it. Wisdom is of the soul, is not susceptible of proof, is its own proof, applies to all stages and objects and qualities, and is content, is the certainty of the reality and immortality of things and the excellence of things. Something there is in the flow to the sight of things that provokes it out of the soul. Now I re-examine philosophies and religions. They may prove well in lecture halls, yet not prove at all under the spacious clouds and along the landscape and flowing currents. Uh, now, of course, uh, those, those of us who are poets will say, if I could have just written one set of lines that profound in my whole life, I would have done something amazing. Marry that set of lines to now tests. All submit to them where they sit, inner, secure, unapproachable to analysis in the soul. Not traditions, nor the outer authorities of the judges. They are the judges of outer authorities and of all traditions. They corroborate as they go only whatever corroborates themselves and touches themselves. For all that, they have it forever in themselves to corroborate far and near without one exception. Now, as I've pointed out, I, I don't think there's a single poem in Leaves of Grass that's a throwaway poem. I think Whitman spent too much time not only writing and not only editing, but placing these poems in the order in which he places them. So, for example, Lesson Complete is followed by Tests, which, if you'll think about it, makes some sense for those of us who are, of course, involved in education, school, teaching, and, of course, for you guys, studying, right, and the taking of tests. And sometimes students will ask, why do I have to take these tests? Well, let's go back to the, to the big five. That is to say, epistemology, what you can know. Again, uh, Whitman is going to argue for that fallibilist position. I think I'm right, but I could be wrong. Of course, ontology, that question of 
Who are you? And in some ways, of course, we are really defined, not only, of course, by our body, but also by our mind and, of course, that capacity of soul-spirit. And then, of course, the two sides of the, of the coin, that is to say, psychology, sociology, the study of the individual mind, the study of the collective mind, and the dance between the two and the celebration, notice here, of the individual that will somehow take ascendancy over the group. And then finally, and some would argue, I think, most importantly for Leaves of Grass, the theodicy question. Especially because for Whitman, the war was the theodicy question of all questions. Why must there be, why must there be tests? If you want, you can go back and reread all of Drum Taps, and you'll recognize that Whitman is asking the very question he's asking in this very poem. That is to say, what is the point of challenges of tests? Notice he begins with the word all. It's fun to just go back and read all of Leaves of Grass looking for certain words like the word all. This idea of the unity, the, the, the ability to kind of, he uses corroborate later, that bringing together. All submit to them where they sit. Inner, secure. Notice unapproachable gives us that idea in the integral uh, philosophy of translinguistic to analysis in the soul. In other words, there is something about wisdom, as he says in Open Road 6, there's something about wisdom that cannot be tested in schools. There is something that is transcendent about wisdom. Notice, he says, not traditions. And the use of traditions, uh, you'll, you'll remember this, Once I Passed, as well as Song of the Broad Act 6, the word traditions is, of course, credence in schools and abeyance. It's that, you know, that creeds in schools. It's that creeds idea, schools as in, as in authority. Not traditions, nor the outer authorities are the judges. Um, and again, this takes us directly back to Song of the Open Road 6. They, that is to say the individual, are the judges of outer authorities and of all traditions. Now, there's nothing more radical. I mean, sometimes I ask, especially internationally, what makes Whitman such an American writer? And I will often point out, well, here it is. This is it. That is to say, Whitman is the first to say, whatever authority, whatever tradition, it's not that I'm completely opposed to it. You'll remember that he says a number of times in Leaves of Grass, I'm willing to listen, I'm willing to hear, but I'm going to re-examine. That is to say, I'm going to go my own way, and I get to be the judge. I get, in the end, to be the authority, the individual. That's the I, right? And then corroborate gets used now three times, and it's fascinating to me the way this word gets used. You'll remember it from Song of the Rolling Earth 3, as well as by Blue Ontario 6. They corroborate as they go, only whatever corroborates themselves and touches themselves. In other words, as, to use the language of today, the lived experience of our lives is what in the end is necessary to the most important learning, which is why we have argued that learning is the connecting of new information to old information in meaningful ways. And of course our reading will answer the three guiding questions. At level one, what does a text say? At level two, what does a text mean? But it's at that third level. How can I relate to this text in some meaningful way? And of course, yes, relating to other texts. Notice we jump to um, open road six. But we're far more interested in how we can relate it back to ourselves. Because if we can't relate information back to ourselves, what's the point of reading Leaves of Grass if in the end we don't have some kind of personal referencing to it? The corroboration has to be there. It has to touch us in some way. By the way, can I just point out that touching and embracing and hugging are all one of the central motifs. In other words, Whitman loves to have that idea. He's reaching out and he's kind of grabbing a hold of you or touching the side of your face. This is as, as we talked about, and of course, Brooklyn Ferry is one of the classic examples of that, as we said. For all that, they have it forever in themselves to corroborate, far and near, without one exception. In other words, all true learning in the end, and this is why I think William James loved Whitman so much, it all comes back to, it's again, pragmatism. It's got to work. It's got to work for you. In other words, What's the point of reading Leaves of Grass if it doesn't actually call you to some kind of thought, some kind of, can we say, happier or better life, uh, more speculative life, more mindful life, we might say, okay? Um, at 2A, then, all true learning is born of the, the, not only the experience, but the ability to qualify the experience as meaningful. Again, the theodicy, not why did this happen to me, but rather why did this happen for me, or why did this happen for us to speak, of course, of things like the war for Whitman to the, to the American reader. At 2B, I love the word choice of corroborate 
that it will it will only, it'll appear here the three times and only in, 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 in the three times playing that game of corroboration is about harmony and I love that right but to begin with the word all and then end with the word corroboration is fun I mean to be able to see his word choice is cool think about it 3a I mean I could go so many places here but I'll just mention because we've already given full lectures on it at learn strong that now think about Emerson's American scholar speech of 31 August 1837 he said it this way the scholar is that man who must take up into himself does that sound familiar from this poem all the ability of the time all the contributions of the past all the hopes of the future in quote think about how that works here and of course that wonderful speech as we spoke about it the uh, idea that there's a young Henry David sitting out in the audience there in the Harvard audience uh, to then be so influenced and yet what does he do? Well he takes these kind of esoteric ideas of Emerson and what does he do? Well he puts them to the test and how does he do that? Well he goes off to the woods to live deliberately as he says to front only the essential facts, right? And to discover if maybe nature didn't have something that he couldn't learn and not when he came to die discover that he had not lived. Living is too dear, he says, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep, suck out all the marrow of life, to drive it into a corner. All of those images of action obviously play right back into this idea of tests. Of course, if we were to ask, why autumn rivulets, and why is this poem in autumn rivulets? I mean, I think it's fairly clear. That is to say, traditions, autumn. But the experiences that I gain from those uh, and through those traditions, my own learning, it, uh, rivulets, in other words, the way that our life flows from one tradition to the next, or as we will say in the integral philosophy, transcend and include. Finally, at 3B, how are we going to own a text like that, uh, like this, since, as we've said, we're trying, to, we're trying to come to terms with each one of these titles in their own right? Well, I think one fair question is to ask, what tests in your life have defined you? And when you look back, you realize these are the tests that have mattered the most to me. And of course, we could ask, do you think reading Leaves of Grass has itself been a beneficial test? I hope so. I hope Talks with Walt are challenging all of us. Thank you.